In this lesson, we're going to talk about stoichiometry. Now, what is stoichiometry? Stoichiometry is all about mole ratios. So, for example, if I have a reaction that looks like this, then all of these numbers in the front, such as the number over here, which is a 1 if there's nothing there, the 2, the 1, and the 2. Guys, those numbers are critical. You need to always take those numbers into account. Those numbers tell us everything that we need. For example, if I tell you that we have 3 moles of CH4, then you can use these ratio numbers, the ones that are, that are written in front of the molecules, to work out the moles of any of the other ones. For example, if I look at, if we have 3 moles of CH4, then we can look at the ratio, for example, of CH4 and oxygen, and we can see that their ratio is a 1 to 2. So it means that for every 1 CH4, you would have 2 oxygens. So if you have 3 moles of CH4, then that means you would have 6 moles of oxygen. I hope that makes sense. If we have 3 moles of CH4, then if we look at the ratio between these two, they are in a 1 to 1 ratio, and so that means you would have 3 moles of CO2. And then if we look at the CH4 and the H2O at the end, they are in a 1 to 2 ratio, and so that means you'd have 6 moles of H2O. Everything in chemistry is about moles. So our goal is to always make sure that these equations are balanced, first of all, and then to always use moles. You don't want to use mass or concentration. You want to use moles. Okay, that is the foundation of chemistry. And so here we say it's all about getting the number of moles, okay? So you, there are different ways, okay? There are five main ways. They could either tell you what the moles are directly, or they would have to give you the mass of the particle, or the mass of the substance. Now we know that you could use n equals to m over mr to get moles if they give you mass, because mr is the molar mass on the periodic table. Or the, yeah. So, and then another way is they could give you number of particles. Why? Because we know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles per mole. Guys, you must be writing all this down. This is probably the most important lesson in this chapter. Um, and then we said there's a formula to calculate the moles, which is like this, where this Na is your Avogadro's number, and N is the number of particles that they give you. The next one is volume of gas. Now, typically, remember at STP, we can say that one mole of gas equals 22.4 decimeters. And then we also had a formula for that, which looks like this, where Vm is your molar volume of 22.4. And then for concentration, that also has a, um, a link towards moles, because we know that there's a C equals to N over V. So what we can see is that it's all about moles. Um, here we have moles, here we have moles, here we have moles, and there we have moles. So guys, chemistry is all about getting moles. All right. So let's practice. Here's the first technique where they give you the moles directly. So what this tells us is that we've got this equation and we can see that it's already balanced because there's numbers in the front. Then it says 6 moles of HCl reacts with excess magnesium hydroxide. Now this whole excess thing, what that means is that you don't have to worry about the magnesium hydroxide. There's more than enough. Later on in this chapter, we're going to start looking at situations where there is not enough. Okay, so it says that there's six moles of HCl. Determine the moles of MgCl2. Okay, so they're looking at HCl and MgCl2. So you need to look at their ratio. Well, the numbers are 2 to 1. So for every two HCls, you will form one of these. So if we have 6 moles of HCl, then we will only form 3 moles of magnesium chloride. Does that make sense? Because the ratio is 2 HCl's for every 1 magnesium chloride. So it's a 2 to 1 ratio. So we could even do this. The ratio is 2 to 1. So if we have 6 HCl, this is actually quite a nice technique, 
then if you want to stick with that ratio, it would be, have to be a 6 to 3. Now the next way they could do it is by using mass. But remember, our goal is always to get moles. So here they have this equation that they've given us, and we should always make sure that it's balanced. But typically, if we can see numbers in the front already, then it shows that they've already balanced it for us. What they've given us here is 40 grams of calcium carbonate, and they want you to de determine the mass of CO2. Now guys, what you can't do is say, okay, well, the CaCO3 is a 1, and CO2 is a 1, so they are in a 1 to 1 ratio. So the answer must be 40 grams. No, because those ratio numbers are not for grams, those ratio numbers are for moles. So our first step is to get moles. So we need to convert this 40 grams of CaCO3 into moles. So we know that you can get moles by using this formula where the mass that they've given us is 40 and your MR is your molar mass which you get from the periodic table. However, I've gone and collected those numbers already and so Ca is 40 carbon is 12 and then there's three oxygens so it'll be 3 times 16 and if you go work this out you'll end up with 0, 0,4 moles now that's going to be the moles of CaCO3 now we can look at the ratios which is a 1 to 1 and so therefore we will have 0, 0,4 moles of CO2 and now they want the mass of CO2, so we can use the N equals to M over MR formula again. But now we have the number of moles, so that'll be 0, 0,4. The mass we don't know. And then we need the MR, or the molar mass of CO2, which would be carbon is 12. And then there's two oxygen, so that will be 16 plus 16. And then to get the mass by itself, well, let's first work out that 0, 0,4 equals to m over 44. And then to get the mass by itself, you could times the 44 to the other side. So it'll be 0, 0,4 multiplied by 44. And so that's going to give us 17,6 grams. Now, the next way that they could ask this is by using the number of particles. So here we can see that this equation is balanced. The reason I say that is that we can see there are numbers in the front, which shows us that there has been an attempt to balance it. They then give us the number of particles of C2H4, and they want us to work out the mass of CO2 that will form. Now we know that there is a way to work out moles if you have number of particles, and that's going to be N over Na, where Na is Avogadro's constant. And so the number of particles that they've given us is 12.04 times 10 to the 23. Then Avogadro's constant is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And if you go work this out, it actually simplifies quite nicely. You're going to get 2 moles of C2H4. So now we have C2H4. Now they want to know the mass of CO2. So we can't get the mass just yet, but we could at least get the moles. Because we know, I'm going to write this out nicely over here. So we know that the ratio of C2H4 is 1 to 2. So I'll say 1 to 2. But now we have how many moles of C2H4? We have 2. So if you just stick with the ratio, then your CO2 moles would be equal to 4. So we have 4 moles of CO2. So therefore, we have 4 moles of CO2. But they want the mass of CO2, so we can just use this formula again. Now guys, I realized, and it's just a bad habit that I have, um, I sometimes put an R over here, and I've been doing that for a few of the previous lessons. It's actually not an R. Uh, that's called relative molar mass, and that's something that we use typically in grade 10, not really in grade 11. So technically, you may have noticed this, um, you should only use a capital M, okay? So just in case some of you are saying, hey, but my teacher doesn't use an R over there. Yeah, it's a bad habit that I have. Um, I realized that just now. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, but everything else is the same. Um, MR still means the same thing as capital M. 
but they technically just mean two different things, okay? So we know that we have four moles of CO2, so we can say four equals to M, and then the M of, um, or the capital M, you gotta just be careful for that, it must be a capital, for CO2 is carbon plus two oxygens, and that's gonna give us 44. And so if you had to get M by itself, you would get 44 times four, which is 176 grams. Okay, now the next way they could do it is by using volume with gases, okay? Because remember that if we have one mole of gas at STP, then we saw this in previous lessons that the volume should be 22.4 decimeters, okay? So it says here that 40 decimeters, sorry, that three should be up there, 40 decimeters of C3H8 reacts with excess oxygen at STP. Guys, when you see STP, we looked at this in previous lessons, standard temperature and pressure. It's their little way of guiding you or hinting that it's at STP, and so you can use 22.4 decimeters for one mole of gas. It says here, determine the mass of CO2 which will form Okay, so what we can do, remember it's all about moles, so we can take this 40 decimeters and convert it into moles. Why? Because we know that there is a formula that uses volume, where M stands for molar volume. This M must be there, okay? And so we can say for C3H8, its volume is 40, the molar volume is 22,4, and if you work that out, we'll get 1.79 moles of C3H8. So now that we have the moles of C3H8, we could easily work out the moles of um, CO2. We can see, let's write C3H8 and CO2. Their ratio is one to three, but how many moles of C3H8 do we actually have? 1.79, and so to get across, we'd have to multiply by 3, and that's going to be 5.37. So we have 5.37 moles of carbon dioxide, and then they want that in mass. So then we can use our normal N equals to M over capital M. Remember, don't put the R there. That was just a little bad habit that I've had because I do a lot of grade 10 as well and in grade 10 they use MR a lot and then with the grade 11s um, they don't so yeah and so we know the number of moles of CO2 it's 5 point let me fill that in here it's 5.37 the mass we don't know the M of um, CO2 is 44 because it's 12 plus 32 or two sixteens, and that's going to give us 236.28 grams of carbon dioxide. And so the last way that we're going to look at is with concentration. So here they give us a 250 centimeter cube solution of H2SO4 with a concentration of 1.5. They want us to determine the mass of hydrogen that is formed. So it's all about the moles. So we know that with uh, volume and concentration we have a formula that can get us moles. So we can rearrange this equation to get it as C times V. And so the number of moles is the concentration, which is 1.5 times the volume. But what's important is that this volume must be in decimeters. So you divide by 1,000 and that's 0, 0,25. And so the moles of H2SO4 will be equal to 0, 0,375. Now we can look at the ratio. Now this equation, if you look carefully, it is balanced already. And so the mole ratio between H2SO4 and hydrogen is one to one. And so the moles of hydrogen is also gonna be 0, 0,375. And then we can convert that to mass. And so we use N equals to M over capital M, where the number of moles is 0, 0,375. The mass we don't know. And the M of hydrogen, well, there's two hydrogens. Each one has a mass of one. And so at the bottom, we're going to have a two over there. And so if you go work out the mass, it'll be 0, 0,375 times two. And so the mass of hydrogen is 0, 0,75 
grams. All right, guys, so in this lesson, we looked at all the different ways that they could ask these stoichiometry questions. In the next lesson, we're going to practice this a little bit more. And then in the lesson after that, we're going to make it even more complicated and we're going to start doing some interesting things. See you then.